What we do here matters, because what we don't do matters even more. We need to continue to push, and we at ADAO are going to continue to push the Surgeon General of the United States. As you know, the United States continues to use asbestos, and that indeed is a barrier to others stopping its use. The most horrific part of this whole story is that it is preventable. Good afternoon. I'm glad you all stayed so far. And I thank Linda and others for inviting me to come. Let's uh, quickly get into what we're going to talk about. And uh, back in the 19, or excuse me, 2006-2007 period, uh, ADAO uh, contracted and sponsored a study that uh, I think uh, Sean Fitzgerald talked about earlier, where they looked at a number of different materials and found several of them that contained asbestos. Uh, these were things off the shelf. Our laboratory, MVA Scientific Consultants, and another laboratory, Buenos uh, Veritas, also involved, were involved in that study. Let's talk about, uh, in their uh, press release, they talked about looking at over 250 suspect products, finding 18 different ones that had asbestos in them. And these are the ones that are, are listed there. You can see those of you on this side. And, uh, and you'll notice that there are a number of different, mainly uh, materials that have uh, I guess a lot of adhesive kind of property to them, primarily. Uh, they called for a comprehensive program of product testing for asbestos and common household products. Well, my idea was to talk about what's happened since then, in 2007. And since 2007, as you might expect, listening to everyone else who's spoken here, there's really been no comprehensive program of product testing that's been developed for any particular group. The Consumer Product Safety Commission, which many people believe is the group that's uh, maintaining the safety of products out there, uh, really has done nothing uh, in that regard. And I can tell you a short story that I was involved in with Dur Donald Durham water putty, one of the materials that we've tested uh, for determining asbestos and have found that it does contain asbestos in it. Uh, this is a material that uh, we tested and found 5 to 10 percent tremolite, actinolite asbestos in it. There's also very thin anthophyllite asbestos fibers. You can see some of these here in these electron microscope images of the fibers that we found there. We did a study in which we sanded the put water putty, and here's uh, lighting coming in from the side, which is called Tyndall lighting, which allows you to see particles in the air that you wouldn't normally see. You can see there's a lot of particles in the area in which this, uh, our investigator who's wearing a respirator and uh, air sampling cassettes on. He also did a, a sanding uh, on a vertical of the same material. And uh, during that sanding, you'll see all those kinds of particles being released. And we found that even mixing this stuff up, which comes as a powder, releases asbestos fibers into the air at about uh, 0 0.9 fibers per cc. And sanding the board, 0 0.2, sanding a vertical board, 0 0.8 fibers per cc. All this data was turned over to the Consumer Product Safety Commission by Dr. Barry Castleman uh, in a letter that he wrote to them and provide this and other data. He, we didn't hear anything uh, for a quite a long time. And uh, what happened then, go back here, uh, was that uh, I was in a deposition because I was asked to talk about my work on the Donald Durham water putty. And one of the attorneys for Donald Durham pulled out the response from the Consumer Product Safety Commission, something that neither uh, Dr. Castleman or I had ever seen. And it was uh, a binder that was quite thick of all the material that the company provided and a short note from Consumer Product Safety Commission saying thank you for all of this material and we've decided not to take any action on this. But they never told us uh, anything about it. So I believe my feeling is that 
don't expect the Consumer Product Safety Commission to provide any help with this asbestos work. Now, the US EPA is working on a variety of things, not uh, products, because that's not really their area, but they are doing a lot of work with the naturally occurring asbestos materials and the uh, vermiculite area. And we've talked uh, quite a bit before about the vermiculite uh, from Libby, Montana, and the fact that we've done some studies that show that there are uh, quite a bit of asbestos materials within the vermiculite. And the question there is, how do we get it out of the areas in which it's found? Now, one of the things that we've discovered is that not all vermiculite has asbestos in it. And Libby certainly has a considerable amount. But other sources, such as this bag here, which is used in, uh, for a variety of purposes, gardening and so on, or packing materials, does not contain any asbestos. We looked very carefully using a variety of different techniques and did not find any asbestos at all in this material. Talc is another area in which things have been developing. In 2008, the R.T. Vanderbilt Company announced its decision to discontinue its sale of the nitol talc and the ceramic talc. These were talc materials from the Governor Talc Division in New York State. This was part of the material that was actually used in the Durham water putty. And you'll notice here the difference between talcum powder, which is this, what you would expect talcum powder to look at, and this industrial talc or nitol talc which has all kinds of fibers in it that was being sold as a talc product. And even their MSD sheet from 1995 actually says, and I've written it down here, but they do have in there asbestiform talc and or asbestiform anthophyllite at 40 to 60 percent of the sample. So they were our selling for many years and debating with uh, the OSHA group and the NIOSH group and a whole range of other governmental agencies that this was not asbestos in 1980s and 1990s, but not in 1975 when they were selling it and asbestos was a good thing. When we did our analyses of it, we found similar to what they had said, that tremolite was 40 percent, anthophyllite was 28 percent, and you'll notice that this particular talc contains only about 24 percent of talc itself. So it's good, I think, that this material has now been permanently removed from the market, and although we are finding it in still some products that were made earlier, we're not finding it in current products. Industrial talc is used for a variety of different things and sometimes doesn't even contain any talc material itself. This was one example that I talked about earlier. The pharmaceutical and, co and cosmetic talcs are very different. They contain mostly talc, and they have limited amount of other minerals there. And in 2011, 2012, the FDA has moved forward to contract with a laboratory to examine cosmetic talc products from the suppliers. And then also, as the ADAO uh, product project was done, they examined off-the-shelf cosmetics. They did not find any asbestos in any of the talcs that they looked at in these most recent ones. And uh, they found no asbestos in the talc-containing cosmetics either. That goes along with a number of studies that we've had from clients who have sent us samples of uh, different types of talcum powders. Here's some that we looked at we did not find any asbestos in. Uh, the main concern appears to be for the foreign suppliers, where this was an image from one of the samples that was collected during the uh, ADAO study in which the uh, powder for fingerprint was a talc that actually had come from China and there's concern about those uh, quite a bit. The uh, products that are in the U.S., as far as we've seen, as our laboratory's limited uh, information from samples that have been sent to us, it appears to be that they, the uh, manufacturers are taking the asbestos issue to heart. And I think it's a lot to do with groups like ADAO keeping the awareness strong, uh, and also the uh, litigation, which of course is uh, allowing individuals who have been uh, hurt by the asbestos uh, to show uh, just cause of why they should be compensated. And that uh, what uh, we've seen then is that there aren't many products that we get that are new and products that companies are interested in 
uh, sending us as a possible source of supply for their uh, product. Now, we are concerned about some of the international groups. And one story, let me just comment. We received a sample from the Middle East, a company who's a major builder there, and they're buying prefabricated buildings from Australia. And they're being transported to the Middle East. Somebody there was drilling holes in this building and said, gee, this powder looks like asbestos. They had it tested locally there, and yes, there was some asbestos. The company was very concerned. The company that owns all the buildings. And so they hired us to take a look at the material. But they uh, contacted the company in Australia that was selling these bu buildings. In Australia, the building company said, we have a zero asbestos tolerance. So there can't be any asbestos in our buildings because we have this certification sheet from our supplier in India that says that there's no asbestos there. <laughs> So it's clearly an international situation where companies from different groups are relying on suppliers from somewhere else who are relying on suppliers who are getting it from somewhere else. And there is really no good way that uh, has been put forward, no comprehensive way to set up a way to, cl to make sure that these uh, things are done properly and that we don't have asbestos in a variety of things that are coming from overseas. There are governmental agencies, as I mentioned before. Uh, I don't believe that the Consumer Product Safety Commission is really up to the task, but that EPA and the FDA uh, seem to be very interested and are moving forward where they can. And as I said, our results on current products sent to us for testing show that there is a significant decrease in the amount of asbestos in current products out there. So with that, uh, I thank you very much.